Hi everyone, this is Zach. In this video lecture, I'll be talking about model validation. So what is model validation? So this is a picture of Kendall Jenner, a very famous model. When you spend the time to understand her emotions and to validate them, then that's model validation because you're giving emotional validation to a model. Uh, okay, <laughs> anyway, hopefully you enjoyed my joke. Um, anyhow, model validation in terms of statistics is basically about making sure your statistical model works well for unseen data when you want to make predictions. So remember the prediction problem is where you estimate a statistical model using data that you have seen and then you want to use the model to make hopefully accurate predictions for unseen data. Now, if you think about it, uh, there are two possible objectives you might have. One is you want to improve how well your model fits the data that you've seen. Alternatively, you might be wanting to improve how well the model fits data that you have not seen. And of course, the perfect model kind of is perfect at both. But if you, think, if you think about which objective is more important, well, actually, fitting well in terms of unseen data is what we really want. I'm going to illustrate this using the HK, the Hong Kong DSE. The DSE is basically an exam which all uh, high schoolers in Hong Kong have to take if they want to get admitted into a prestigious university like City University of Hong Kong. All right, so when students study for the DSE, they have to uh, practice, many of them will practice using so-called mock exam papers or past year papers if they manage to get them. So you can think of this as the training set where you learn, develop your skills and get ready for the exam. However, the the real goal is to perform well with the testing set, which is the actual unseen questions that you didn't practice for in the real exam papers. So the, although you, you learn math or practice your math using the training set, the goal is to do well in the testing set, the data that you have not seen. Now, in statistics, there's a phenomenon called overfitting. Uh, basically, uh, I will just borrow what Wikipedia says. Overfitting is the production of an analysis that corresponds too closely or exactly to a particular set of data and may therefore fail to fit additional data or predict future observations reliably. So mainly the problem is it fits the, day, the seen data too well so it learns some of the kind of uh, fits some of the idiosyncratic features of the seen data, but because of that, it doesn't fit the unseen data. It fits the unseen data very poorly because the unseen data doesn't have those idiosyncratic features. It only has the general patterns. So the goal of model validation is to avoid this problem of overfitting. So uh, by design, your model will fit the seen data well and you want to know, does it fit unseen data well? But of course, if you don't see the data, how do you know if it will fit it well? So there's a trick, which is we divide the data that we are given into seen and so-called quote-unquote unseen data. And we'll, t we'll compare the forecast accuracy between the seen and the, our constructed unseen data. So, uh, this is common. This process of dividing the data into, is into a so-called training set, which is data where, where we estimate the model, we know x and y, and a testing set where we test the model, uh, giving the model only x, and comparing the predicted with the actual y's. So we estimate the model parameters using the training set, and we Compute, the prediction, compute and compare the prediction accuracy on the testing sets. Here's a very, very simple example where the black dots are the training sets and the red dots are the testing sets. So here are two models uh, for the training set. The blue curve fits the data exactly. There's basically zero error. 
but it fits some of the idiosyncratic features of this data, whereas the green line basically just fits the general trend and ignores some of the idiosyncratic noise in, in the data. So just looking at this, it's quite obvious that we expect the green line to be better because it fits only the general pattern, whereas the blue line fits the idiosyncratic noisy features. And if you actually look at the testing set, you can see that the, the green line fits the testing set much better than the blue line. So the blue line fits the training set better, but that's not really useful because we, the goal is to fit the testing set better. So how do you detect if overfitting is occurring? Uh, one way to do that is to compute the in-sample R-square and compare it with the out-of-sample R-square. And if the out-of-sample R-square is much worse than the in-sample R-square, this could be a sign that overfitting is occurring. OK, here's a very quick coding demo. So, uh, right, load the tidyverse, our favorite package. This is basically how I draw the plots, but uh, so I'm going to skip that. Let's load the data, the training set and the testing set. And if you want to compute the in-sample R-squared, you can just read it from the model summary. In this case, it's 0 0.6553. Now, when you want to compute the out of sample R square, it's a bit more tricky. So first you make the predictions, like so, right? And then you compare to sum of squared errors, like so. And then you compute the total sum of squares. The total sum of squares is based on the baseline value from the training set, but the actual values from the testing set, okay? So that part is a little bit tricky. So we use the mean of the training scores compared with the actual values of the testing scores. Whoops, sorry. So that. And then the R squared is just given by the formula 1 minus sum of square errors divided by total sum of squares. All right. So in this case, we see the, the in-sample R squared is 0.6. Six. The outer sample R squared is 0.84, so this is fairly similar, which suggests that overfitting is not happening. Of course, there's a caveat that the sample size is fairly small. The training set is 40 observations, and the testing set is only 10 observations. So ideally, we would like to have more data and a bigger training and testing sets just to validate the model. Alright, so to conclude, uh, the goal of prediction is to be accurate for the unseen data. So we want to check for overfitting, because when overfitting happens, the in-sample ac forecast accuracy is very good, but the outer sample forecast accuracy is terrible. And one way to check for overfitting is to compare the in-sample versus the outer sample R-squared. That's all for today. See you next time. Bye!